My lens is kind of dirty. Hello everyone, it is Nancy Taylor here and you are joining me for a video that will walk you through the level 5 lesson, Earth, Our Home Pollution. I am, I am going to go over the topics and things that you are graded on, the ESL strategies. I'm going to give those all up front and give you examples and then I will put the 10 minute video walkthrough, just an example of me teaching it in the classroom, well my makeshift classroom in Zoom. <laughs> I will show you that at the end. And look in the description box, I'll put timestamps so you know exactly where to go to. Now in my video, I notice I have a striped shirt. They do say to wear like a solid shirt or something that's professional. So I would not have worn this, I just was wearing it today. So number one, the first thing is we need repetition. I know with the younger students, it's very key to hit that repetition, the older students as well. So let me give you an example. I'm teaching environment. I say it first and I want to say it at least two times or more depending on how the child responds. If they already know the word up front, I'm obviously going to move past that, ask an extension question. I'm not just going to teach it exactly how I practice. If the student already has it down, that would just be a waste of their time and my instruction. Environment. 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 Can you read this? They're reading the definition. Good job! And so I have them read it in text and then I ask an extension question. What is an environment? So the rule of five, introduce the word, repetition, then I have them read the definition, go over what the meaning is, we read it in context, so I correct any errors that they have there for number four is correcting the errors, and number five is the extension questions. I use the rule of five for my older students all the time. Number two is positive correction. Let's say they're reading the word environment and they say envir envir they just can't say it. I say so close, environment, and I might break it down for them environment environment good job and then I reward them verbal praise give them a reward system make sure they feel amazing <laughs> number three is the conversation you want to make sure that you cater to that child and this is something that you really can't practice without someone in front of you you can pretend like they say I and learn this at school, and then you could ask a follow-up question. You never want to make them feel like, okay, we don't want to talk about it, we have to get over this objective, and we have to do what I prepared. I want it to feel natural, I want to cater to the child's interests, their personality, that's what they're going to connect with you, and they're practicing English. That's what we want, is a natural conversation, not robots that can repeat sentences. No, no, no. It's a conversation. They've been learning English for two years or more, so that is important. Number four, teacher output. I always have them do the reading. I have them do, a lot of times they're telling me story after story, so they have more output than I do, but you wanna make sure that you're not filling it in with too much of your own language and they're tapping out. We want them to share, them to make connections. Share your life as well. Don't feel like you can only speak the exact words on the slide. Number five, supplementary tools. Supplementary tools. In the mock class, if you have four different kinds, then that is full scores. A full score. So I have like puppets, I have a book to show environment, I have my whiteboard, and I even have like a whiteboard to show how to do the grammar. I have prepped ahead of time to have those props. And I also have my reward system was on my phone, and that's fine. But don't only use your phone. Have a variety for different types of props. Number six, your teaching procedure. So you want a variety of how you teach. I don't wanna just say read, read this, answer this question, read this, answer this question. I might have Mike come in, and he's gonna read in a funny voice. And then Meg comes in and I say, you do Meg. That was, a, do it a little higher, and we have so much fun with it. I'll have them look at this book and say, what are things that you see here? And this could introduce them to environment. I see water, I see the fish, there's bubbles. Okay, what kind of environment do fish live in? So I'm thinking of variety ways, or ducks, what kind of environment do you see here? And those are just different tools and ways to mix it up so it's not just the same because that is boring. <laughs> so boring. Number seven, mastery of curriculum. That means that you have your synthetic phonics down, you understand the objectives that you're teaching, and that's actually another tab is the objectives. Your syntax, your grammar, so make sure your English is correct and be aware of that and your pronunciation is on, spot on. Um, your language needs to be 
the example. So make sure that you're thinking of that and presenting it in a good, in a positive and great way. But we're not perfect. I'm sure I see things incorrectly all the time. Number eight is the reward system. So you can use the one on the screen. I don't love it because it's very, it's too young for the level five in my opinion. So I, I know rabbits are too young for the level five, but I might like shoot them in a basket. Okay, Woo. yeah! Or have them shoot it. Okay, you shoot it. I love to make them interactive. I use, you'll see in the video example, I use um, Google Slides on my phone, so pick a number. Then they pick seven. Oh, come on, seven. Seven, <gasps> a star, yahoo! Number nine are your classroom commands. So making sure that you guide the student, they're not confused on what you want them to do. If the child looks at you confused, then put it on like, how could I do a better job at making sure they understand what I want? So I might model for them first what to do. Maybe it's the grammar section and I'm filling in is or are, and I model how to do it. I put are here because it's plural. Now you try this one. If I think they're exceeding and doing an amazing job, I'll say, can you try number one? And if they do a great job, that's awesome. But I might have to backtrack if I see them struggling and then model and, and show them what I want them to do. But this one goes hand in hand with tuning into the child and what they're doing well and where they need a little bit of extra support. My really low readers, I popcorn read. You read a paragraph, I read a paragraph. You do one, I do one. Or else we wouldn't get through the content in time. And I really go into depth on one thing. Say that day, we focus on one word and pronouncing it correctly. Number 10 is your pacing. So if you finish the lesson, all of it in 10 minutes, you're going to get an exceptional. A lot of people will send me messages and say, I didn't finish everything, did I fail? No. It's only one category in the rubric. You did not fail. As long as you were teaching the objectives of the slides, then you're scoring and doing well there. Now your pacing comes with time. The more you practice, the more time you spend on it, the more you see a variety of students, you're going to get better at it. So don't, don't hold the standard of, I will finish everything in your mock class, because it really is difficult for the pacing. I think this is probably the most challenging part as you transition to teaching online, because you have that set amount of time. You can't pick up where you were. <laughs> the previous day in this format, in VIP Kids format of they book you. So that's fine, but you just need to make sure that you practice and master that. Number 11 is the lesson objectives. So for this one, it says the student has been studying for two years. You're teaching environment for the level five lesson and you're teaching trash, <laughs> my trash bin. You're not usually teaching sentence um, phrases like you're teaching the level two and three because they're learning vocabulary usually in these older higher levels and a lot of it is grammar that grammar can be challenging and you'll see math lesson science you'll see all across the board in your lessons so make sure you look at the objectives for that specific lesson and if you teach the same student over and over you'll see that they'll have the same objectives over and over so they get a lot of repetition so don't feel like you have to nail it knock it out of the park every single objective that one time but you do have to cover them the other ones for that one is going to for future tense and why is a vowel sound okay number 12 is extension now with the extension you really kind of have to cater it to the child if your mock class mentor is pretending to really struggle you maybe extend twice but your goal is initially to cover all the content and then you're asking extension questions that create the conversation so those go hand in hand is I could ask the child, what does your environment look like? Where do you live? Well, mine looks very different. And then we move on. So I've asked an extension question that kind of makes them think outside of the box. A lot of them are written in the bottom. You can ask those. I love the last slide is a great one for extension. Comparing the two is this one is not clean. This one is clean. And we can review what they've learned and extend on that. Number 13 is the student talk time. With a level four and five, it's a little easier to have more student talk time because they're comfortable with it. But sometimes you'll have a shy student, sometimes you'll have a struggling student. So to make sure that they're talking on every single slide and your goal is 70%. So maybe clock when they're talking or you're talking or if you're currently a teacher, you could watch a recording and see, wow, I'm talking a lot, like in my videos. <laughs> I'm not letting you guys talk it. 
all. <laughs> I failed. Number 14 is content delivery. And this goes back to having a variety of ways that you present the, the content. So having a book here, having the whiteboard, having a variety of supplementary tools. Um, I don't just underline, read this and ask the question. You want to bring life to your lesson and think ahead of time on how you're going to help them to understand that content. As a parent, you would appreciate it. So make sure you're giving that same service and just extra focus to your students because the parents do notice. They know, I've heard them multiple times say, yeah, we know when, when teachers are just winging it. So make sure that you're putting in the preparation. It will be a lot less time later on as you have the hang of it and you know exactly how to teach the lessons, but make sure you're still putting in the time and not neglecting that preparation time. Number 15, your rapport. This starts with the introduction slide. Hello, how are you? Ask them about their day. It's not a uniform ask this. These are the only questions you can ask like the level two. It's a lot more lenient on what you can ask about. I usually ask what they did at school. I usually, right now it was Chinese New Year, so I asked about their holiday. Where do they travel? You went to Japan, let me see pictures. And my intro slide is my favorite slide because we get a catch up. And I do have to focus on the pacing at that point and think, okay, Okay, I can spend a max of three minutes here and then adjust as we go through if it's an advanced student. If it's a struggling student, we might only get one minute there on the intro slide, but that's okay because you will get to know your students and know that stuff. Make sure you're knowledgeable of their culture, understanding that many of them live in apartments in the winter many times they have on coats because they believe that you can become sick if it's too cold. They don't have ice in their water, so they drink warmer water because same thing, you could get a flu or have a cold. These students students work so hard. They go to school at 7 a.m., get home at like 6, 7. Like they get home so late. And what do they do when they get home? My one student said, goes to school at 7, home at 5, does homework right away, and then takes their VIP kid classes at 8. I have students that are taking classes at 9, 9.30, and then they go to bed at 10. So all day, they are studying and they're smiling and happy. And that is the expectation. They have such a high standard and expectation for academics. So be aware of that. Know that your class needs to be fun and inviting and a break from just study, reading and text because they get that a lot all day at school. So we want creative thinking. We want to think outside the box. We want to take them with us to America. Come into my home. Come see my pictures of my family. I share my phone all the time. And this is my favorite level to teach. I love my older, my higher levels just because I know them so well. We have a conversation. We have a lot of fun. I use a lot of sarcasm and you'll see that in my example, but it makes it fun. I hope that this video helped you out. You guys, make sure that you do your work now. Study up, practice, 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 and then knock it out of the park. You will do an excellent job and I'm, I'm pretty stoked that you watched this whole thing. <laughs> Good job. Here's a cookie. <laughs> Just kidding. Hello everyone. Welcome to my video on the level five lesson for your application. This is Earth Our Home Pollution and it is the updated 10 minute version. Yay! <laughs> so in this lesson, I am going to go through all 10 slides all in a row, pretending there's a student on the other end. However, keep in mind, you'll have a mentor on the other end that's pretending to be a student. Now, I think this is a good example of what you may feel like in the classroom because I'm filming on Zoom. I'm very familiar in the actual classroom, but here on Zoom, I'm trying to figure out how to fiddle with the buttons and all that good stuff. So when you're in the classroom, practice. Go into the practice room. Practice using the different features and flipping through the slides and going back and forth and become more familiar with what you're doing there. That's going to improve your pacing and also your confidence. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> now, I will be blurring the slides on YouTube because I want to keep those confidential for VIP Kid. I have not created them. They are not mine. I'm just showing you how I would teach them. If you are one of my referrals, I will keep the slides open so that you can see them on my website. So make sure if you're one of my referrals, send me an email. Let me know if you don't have access to the one that doesn't have the blur because I want to make sure that you have that one. Now, if you are someone else's referral, that's just fine. Get a slide out in front of you. Just get your own PowerPoint and follow along. I hope that this helps you out. I'll be walking through just the 10 minute version. Okay, we're going to jump right into it. Hello. Hello, Jack. My name is Teacher Nancy. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Jack, where do you live? 
in Beijing. That's wonderful. Did you have school today? <laughs> Do you remember what you learned in school? A little bit. <laughs> Did you run? Have PE? Oh, that is my favorite class, Jack. My favorite class. Okay, are you ready to get started? Good. Earth, our home, pollution. Good. What's pollution? Mm. Yes, that was a good answer. It is when there's trash around. And what do cars leave that is pollution? Yes, you're correct. It's called exhaust. When you have to wear a mask because the air quality is not good, that is pollution. You know so much, Jack. Let's get started. When you do a good job today, you're going to get a really cool reward. You'll pick a number and there's a surprise behind it. Let's do one right now. Pick a number. One. Ding, ding, ding. Oh. <laughs> he pushed the turtle. Where do we live? Environment. Good. Environment. Environment. Yes. Can you read this? Correct. Let's look at this picture. What do you see? A jungle. We call it a jungle. What about this environment? Yes, it is hot in the desert. And what is the third environment? The city. It does look like Beijing. Which of the three pictures is your environment? Good. I live here. Which environment do you think that is? Yeah. I'm in a desert in Utah. Can you read this, Jack? You did a great job at saying the word environment. Way to go. Crash. Good. You got it. Can you read this for me? Trash. Good. It is something that is not useful anymore. I want to show you. What is this? Yes, trash bin. A trash bin. Can you read Meg's speech? Good. We should put our trash. Watch. Da 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 da. Ah. Ding. <laughs> What's another word for trash bin? Garbage. Trash can. You got it, Jack. Jack, pick a number. Eight. Ah. <laughs> Good job, Jack. High five. I have a story for you to read. I'm going to listen to you read, but first let's review the words. Can you read this red word? Good. And do you remember? Yes, that was great pronunciation. You're ready to go. Go ahead. Good job. This word is safer. Safer. Mm -hmm. And this word is beautiful. Beautiful. Good. What do you see in the picture, Jack? Yes. And how would that make you feel? Yeah, you wouldn't feel good. 
I agree. What do you think you could do, Jack, to help this? Yes, I think so too. Would you want to help? I would want to help too. You could put a sign that says, please put in the trash bin. Can you read this question? Good. Yes, she sees trash. Can you use a full sentence on number two? Good. And what is the answer? Yes, she doesn't feel good. Like you said you would feel, you wouldn't be very happy to see trash in your neighborhood. Number three. Okay, let's answer one at a time. What can her, Jenny and her family do to help? Yes, the sign like we talked about. And do you think that's enough? Do you think that's enough? Oh, maybe they could. They could tell their neighbors, go to door to door. Look, going to, going to. Mm -hmm. This is the future tense. That means it hasn't happened yet. This arrow means it's going to happen. What does the teacher say here? Yes, we use going to and I'll be Meg. I am going to pick up the trash. Oh, good job, Meg, high five. Let's pretend like you are Mike. What would you say with the words going to? You are going to ride your bike? Oh, look, going to ride your bike? What about going to drive the car? Can you drive? <laughs> no. Future tense is going to. Past tense ends in ed. Can you read this word for me? Harmed, harmed. Mm -hmm. Kind of has a t, harmed. And this is present tense. It's just the root word, harm. Now there's a tricky one in here and I want you to find it, Jack. Number one, can you read it? Good, past, future, or present. You got it, it is the past because it has harmed. Number two, good reading, excellent job. Past, future, or present. Yes, it is the root word. Now number three is a challenge one. Good, has harm, but it's tricky. It is, it is future tense because it says will not. We will not is the future. And number four, Good. <laughs> yes, future tense. Good job at drawing the lines. It looks wonderful. Pick a number. Four. Ah, your first star. Pick one more. One more. Five. <laughs> Give me knuckles. Ba la 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 la. We're going to practice the grammar here. You're going to fill in the blanks to make each sentence future tense, in the future, going to happen. Read number one for me. Pollution and trash. Close, when you say is, that is singular, one. We have two, so what is the plural form? are. This is are. When you see a plural form, more than one, we use are going to harm the animals. Good job. Let's see number two. One is. Yes, is. 
is going to is singular, one. Great job, high five. You got it. <laughs> Look here. Do you know the mm, vowels? What are the vowel letters? A, good, E, yes, I, O, and U. <laughs> Should have typed it. <laughs> Yes, and sometimes why. We say, and sometimes why. And in these words, it says E. Why is a vowel sound when it makes certain sounds? Thanks, Mike. Can you read this? Silly. <laughs> Good. Yes. Good. Now, this is when it is a consonant. It says Y. Yes. Show me a yawn. Hey, stop yawning in class. <laughs> Good job. Pick a number. Nine. Ta -da. Oh. <laughs> Do you have a cat? A dog? Oh, you have a fish? <gasps> Look. I have a fish. This is his environment. <laughs> Many fish. What does the fish's environment look like? Yes, it is water and plants and sand. Look here. What do you see? Mm. Mm. So much trash. Where does it need to go? Yes, in the trash bin. You're correct. Do you think you could clean all of that up? Would you eat the Doritos? <laughs> Yuck. Don't eat the Doritos, Jack. How about this park? How does that look? It looks good. What is the difference? Yeah, it is much cleaner. And which park would you rather visit? Yep, ding, 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 ding. You got that right. Jack, you've earned one star. Let's see if you can find one more. Pick a number. 10. Ah! It's time to say goodbye. You did an excellent job in class today. I will see you next time. Goodbye, Jack. Bye. And that is the 10 minute version. Now I would type some things in the chat box like environment, you could type, you could type out any of these like going to, I just didn't have a chat box up. I should have opened up like notes or something, but that's okay. Just keep in mind that you do have a chat box and you're creating a conversation with the student. It does have guidelines on questions, but it's not as particular. You don't have to know exactly how they ask them as you do in the level two, because level two, they only know those phrases. If you veer from them, they're like, what? <laughs> so make sure that you cater to the child. Listen to how they do. Jack was a really excellent student. He did everything really well. He made a couple mistakes, so it's your job to correct them in a positive way. Give them a lot of reinforcement. You want a secondary reward, so anything outside, that wasn't even my reward. I just used Google Slides, and I wanted to show you how I use it in my actual classroom. So in the application process, you won't have Google Slides. It's a group that you can join on Facebook once you become a teacher. And I just wanted to show you how I use it because it's so simple. I want to show you that you don't have to have a bajillion props galore. Now on the supplementary, supplementary tools, you do want to have four to get full points there. So just so you know, and a variety. So I had a whiteboard, I had a Megan mic, I had my phone to show a couple things. I had this book to show an environment. I even had other props that I didn't get to. Remember I had my trash bin to show trash. Um, I could have showed the panda and asked, what is the panda's environment? Um, 
anything like that, I have extra props around me and then I can use at least four because you will forget to use them. You will forget things here and there and think, ah, I could have done this better. But the most important thing is that you do your best, you practice and you just lay it all out there. But don't have any regrets because nobody's perfect. Just expect to make mistakes. <laughs> all right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will catch you later. Bye-bye. Good luck. How do I stop it? Stop. This is like the awkward moment when you can't figure out how to hang up. I can't figure it out. Nope, it's just me. All right, guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.